So, <coughs> hi everyone. This is Suresh Kumar, right? So, here in this session, we are going to see about uh, stress, strain, Hooke's law, and uh, elastic constants. So, this is our uh, first topic here. So, uh, from this topic, we are going to discuss. Uh, we are going to discuss the basics of stress strain. Few previous questions on uh, stress strain, Hooke's law. And then we will also discuss the previous equation papers on elastic constants. So this is our next target in the next uh, one hours of uh, session. I'm Suresh Kumar. I'm having a five years of teaching experience on handling synth of materials, machine design, and theory of machine courses. Right. So this is my uh, in this month. This is my first YouTube class. Right. So you can uh, see my classes on every Sunday. 12 to 1 and 5 to 6 I'll be there for a gate mechanical uh, I'll be a special classes on YouTube right in the next uh, upcoming three Sundays you can uh, watch my videos from afternoon 12 to 1 12 to 1 and evening 5 to 6 right so yeah we'll move to our session So now, uh, what is important about uh, strength of materials? Why we need to study strength of materials? That is the part, right? Okay, here uh, there are uh, four uh, major sections in the gate mechanical. The yeah, yeah, and this is our part. Okay, okay, right. So this is our section two. Right, this is our section two. Okay, right. Under section two, there are four courses. One is engineering mechanics, mechanics of materials or strength of materials, theory of machines, and machine design. There are four courses, right? So based on this analysis, you see, this is the last five years of analysis. You can uh, see me that, right? So you are a strength of materials which has around ten percentage of weightage in gate mechanical in each years, right? So on an average, it is about ten percentage. So apart from SOM, your theory of machines, uh, thermodynamics and fluid mechanics, all these four courses are very, very important and each carries a 10% of weightage in gate mechanical. So, so where to concentrate your synth of materials, which is one basic fundamental course, you must concentrate, right? Once if you understand the synth of materials, then you can easily go through to your uh, machine design components, right? It is a very, very easier one your machine design when you understand your synth of materials okay right so please understand your synth of materials uh, understand the fundamentals and if you do it then you can easily solve the problems right so there are only 13 topics in synth of materials right i have divided into 13 major topics so those topics are very very uh, uh, important in gate where your previous last uh, 20 years question paper will be asked between these 13 topics only right so that is why i'm giving you the 13 topics and one such topic is your elastic constant so that is the topic we are going to see in this today's session okay right so uh, i will quickly brush up the basics about uh, stress strain and we will just move on to elastic constants so so here the first uh, yeah the first five minutes of time we will uh, discuss about uh, introduction about the course right and next 10 minutes of time we will discuss about uh, <clears throat> basic stresses and strain okay right and next 10 minutes we will discuss about the stress strain curve and Hooke's law right and next five minutes will be for elastic constants okay right so this is around 30 minutes of time we will see the theory part right so apart from theory part remaining 30 minutes of time right we will see previous year questions and numericals on the topics which we have discussed that means your basic stresses stress strain curve hooks law and elastic constants row uh, in these topics, we will see previous equations and few numerical questions and I will try to make up around the 20 to 25 uh, previous questions in these topics, right? If time permits, we will solve it within this one hour of time and I will uh, I will teach you, right, how to solve these problems within a 30 seconds of time, right? That is what the key here, right? So what is the approach? How to approach the problem? 
how to identify the uh, identify your requirement and what is the key to approach your solution okay right there is there will be a some key for each kind of a question right if you identify the key then you can easily solve it within a 30 seconds right that is the uh, main part about this session okay right so now we will come to our uh, uh, session right so what does mean by stress okay right what does mean by stress right stress means it is a resistance offered by the material when an external force is applied when an external force is applied the stress is created and stress is equal to load by area stress is equal to load by area and it is represented in pascals okay right it is represented in pascals where your p that means load applied on the material which is mentioned in newtons and a means cross section area of material which is mentioned in meter squares it can also be mentioned in millimeter squares right so what is the resistance right here i said you right what is the resistance by the material okay right so take up a part and the load applied is along the longitudinal axis away from the component this is your p load p okay right now if a material which uh, if they cut the material at xx section right split it into two part okay so in this part the p load is applied in this direction right <clears throat> and in the second part your load is applied in this direction so the resistance in this material will be equal to your applied load resistance will be equal to your applied load and resistance is equal to your applied load but it is in the opposite direction okay you can see here the resistance will be in the opposite direction okay right so if you apply any kind of a load the material will generate the material will offer a resistance for that load okay so that resistance is called your stress resistance in per unit area is called as a stress okay right now when the load is applied away from your common that means along the longitudinal axis away from your component when it is called as a tensile load right it is called as a tensile load the stress created due to the tensile load which is called as a tensile stress which is represented as sigma t right so the fibers on the material which tends to stretch due to the external force so if a load is applied tensile load is applied the fibers in the material will tends to stretch it got it right next one is your compressive stress where in compressive stress okay uh, if you take a, a component if you take up a component which is very similar to the tensile stress where the load is applied along the longitudinal axis towards the component along the longitudinal axis towards the component so uh, right so in this case the resistance will be opposite to the applied load direction you can see here resistance is opposite to the load applied direction yeah right got it now so due to this load the fibers in the material will tends to contract okay right so it will create a compressive stress it is represented as sigma c so coming to the uh, shear stress right here you can see there is a rivet which is holding two plates where in these two plates the load which is applied shear load is applied in two loads are applied in the opposite direction the magnitude is same so which is called as a coplanar right magnitude is same in opposite direction is called as a coplanar so the coplanar to the applied forces right so the material will fail at this the rivet will fail at this point so it is split into two part due to the applied load right so now what is the theme is here is how to identify whether it is a shear or a compressive or a tensile right very simple one for a shear stress this is your load applied direction and your cutting plane will be parallel to your load applied direction okay your cutting plane will be parallel to your load applied direction so your load applied direction this is your cutting plane if you come to your compressive stress or a tensile stress right so this is your load applied direction and cutting plane will be perpendicular to the load applied direction whereas here in compressive also your load applied direction and cutting plane it will be perpendicular while in shear stress load applied direction and cutting plane will be parallel 
Okay, that is the main difference between the shear stress and your tensile or a compressive stress. So, tensile or a compressive stress will be called as a longitudinal stress. Based on the load direction, you must identify whether it is a tensile or a compressive. Right. So, coming to the next one, strain. Okay. So, what is strain? Which is represented as E. Okay. Right. So, if a bar which is fixed in the top, if a bar which is fixed in the top, and load P which is applied at the bottom of this bar P okay right so the length of the component length of the bar is L now you can see here due to this load applied there is a change in dimension due to the load applied you will have a change in its length right so this displacement per unit length which is called as a displacement per unit length so tensile strain means the, due to the load, the material tends to expand or elongate. So, tensile load will create a tensile stress. Same way, tensile load will create a tensile strain. Because due to the tensile load only, the fibers tends to elongate. right? So, the elongation per unit length, which is called as a tensile strain, which is uh, represented as E suffix T. So, the formula is change in length by L. Okay, where change in length, del L is mentioned as change in length in meters or millimeters and L means original length in meters or millimeters. Likewise, tensile strain, there is another part which is compressive strain which is directly opposite to your, directly opposite to your tensile strain. Okay, right. So, tensile strain means, tensile strain means, your compressive strain means reduction in length due to Okay, per unit length so this compressive strain will be created due to the compressive load okay right so ec that means your uh, compressive strain is equal to same formula change in length by original length here change in length means compression or reduction in length okay right got it so now main important part coming back to the main important part where normal strain linear strain longitudinal strain there are four important the three important terminologies right so your uh, if a question which is asked like a normal strain or a linear strain or longitudinal strain whatever it may be right so these three things are same if a, a question which is mentioned about mentioned on these three parts that means normal strain linear strain and longitudinal strain it is representing either tensile strain or a compressive strain Based on the load applied, you must identify whether it is a tensile or a compressive. Got it? Right? So, please remember these three terminologies. Normal strain, linear strain or longitudinal strain. So, coming to the shear strain. Right? This is the third part. Here, what is mean by shear strain means angle of deformation. So, phi is equal to del by L. Del means this is your... Uh, when a uh, block which is fixed at the bottom and a load P which is applied in the tangential, right? Load is P is applied uh, in the tangential to this component, right? This is your del, del and L means its total height, L. Okay, right? Now, where de del is equal to lateral displacement due to the applied load on tangential component and L means original length. L is original length in meters or millimeters okay right meters or millimeters okay so your shear strain is equal to angle of deformation shear strain is angle of deformation okay right so coming to the uh, stress strain curve okay here elastic region okay there are one of the key parts is elastic region and plastic region please remember these two points so where a b c c dash d and f so, out of these points, six points, A represents proportional limit, B represents elastic limit, C represents upper yield point, C dash represents the lower yield point, D is ultimate strength and F is failure. Okay, right. So, now what is proportional limit? What is proportional limit? What is uh, proportional limit means, right? If you uh, measure the stress strain curve, right? If you draw a slope, if you find the slope, right? 
this is your strain and stress right it will be equal up to this a point right if you draw a slope it will be equal up to the a point okay right so wherever you find out it will be equal okay that is called a up to this a point the stress will be proportional to your e okay so what is b means it is uh, elastic limit elastic limit means the material will be under elastic property up to this b point when it crosses the b it turns into the plastic plastic property okay right and c to c dash it is called as an yield point where the material will yield between the c and c dash and your strain hardening usually it will be done from uh, elastic uh, uh, elastic limit to yield point right in practical the strain hardening will be done up to yield point only but here it is mentioned in theoretical it is mentioned up to the ultimate strength right d which is called as a ultimate strength and f means failure so from d to f the stress will be reduced and at that point necking will be happen okay necking will be happen got it right so next one true stress strain curve so there is a difference between your engineering stress strain curve and a true stress strain curve so in engineering stress strain curve you can see here engineering stress strain curve so from the yield point the from the yield point the curve will be increased right curve will be increased and it will have an ultimate strength and after the ultimate strength the curve will be decreased and at one point the material will fail so here you will have a necking here you will have a necking right so but in true stress strain curve you cannot identify any kind of uh, yield point here right it will be a bit difficult to find the yield point whereas uh, there is no uh, point called an ultimate strength where there is no point called an ultimate strength in true stress strain curve right it will be just increasing and finally at one point it will failure right up to this failure it will be increasing gradually right there is no uh, ultimate strength point and uh, even you see in the engineering stress strain curve after attaining the ultimate strength the curve will be decreased right the stress will be decreased but here you can't see that point okay right that is the major difference between true stress strain curve and the engineering stress strain curve got it right so coming to the hooks law right what is mean by the hooks law okay right so stress is directly proportional to strain within elastic limit right so uh, here in the stress strain diagram i have mentioned it up to proportional limit right because in real time the proportional limit and your elastic limit will be at the same point right there will not be any uh, major difference between these two points it will be uh, the difference will be very very minimum it will be in the negligible amount right the difference will be in the negligible amount okay right so here you can see difference will be in the negligible amount okay right okay that is why your proportional limit and elastic limit will be in the same point that is why i have mentioned it as the proportional limit okay right got it now coming back to the hooks law which which says that stress is directly proportional to strain and it is represented by the constant e capital e and it is your young's modulus capital e means young's modulus where stress sigma is equal to stress newton per meter square e is equal to strain it is a dimensionless number where stress can also be represented as newton per mm square okay right got it right so coming back to the constants okay so what is the constants so the young's modulus or modulus of elasticity so first of all i will uh, uh, i will explain you right right there are uh, there are four elastic constants right which is for an isotropic material okay right so we are speaking about isotropic material we are speaking about isotropic material there are a four elastic constants right for a orthotropic material for a orthotropic material there are nine elastic constant and for an isotropic material there is a 21 elastic constants 
okay isotropic orthotropic and anisotropic material so everyone know the difference between these points right isotropic means right your mechanical property will be same in all 360 degrees right if you measure the mechanical property it will be same in all 360 degrees whereas for an orthotropic material the mechanical property will vary based on three mutually perpendicular axes and anisotropic means right the mechanical property will be different in all 360 degrees that is the major difference between these three so in all conditions we are speaking about linearly elastic isotropic material we are speaking about this point right so for a linearly elastic isotropic material there are a four elastic constants right so what are those four elastic constants first one is Young's modulus or a modulus of elasticity or elastic modulus okay right so we all know about as we all know this as a Hooke's law so Young's modulus is equal to stress by strain where in rigidity modulus or a modulus of rigidity G rigidity modulus or modulus of rigidity G that means G is equal to shear stress by shear strain which is represented as G is equal to shear stress by shear strain okay right so next one bulk modulus which is represented as K so K is equal to stress by volumetric strain okay and fourth one is the Poisson's ratio yes Poisson's ratio is one of the elastic constant right usually we have studied about the three elastic constants one is your elastic modulus of elasticity second one is the modulus of rigidity third one is the bulk modulus but actually you are we are all having the fourth elastic constant which is known as the mu that is your Poisson's ratio right <coughs> So mu is equal to transverse strain or a lateral strain by longitudinal strain. Transverse strain or lateral strain by longitudinal strain. That is the mu's formula, right? Now coming to the important part, right? Everyone can uh, read these four parts from any textbook, right? What is the important about this session, right? What I'm going to give you while if you're watching this session, right? That is the path here. We'll come here. So now this is your only one equation, okay, right? This is the only one equation right so if you study this equation you can solve it right you can solve all the problems right in the earlier uh, in the starting of this session I told you right I can uh, I will solve you around 20 to 25 questions right so I will solve all those 20 to 25 questions and those questions are taken from the previous gate gate only right so all those questions will be solved by only this equation Right? I won't go anywhere, right? So I, all those questions will be solved by using only this equation, right? <clears throat> you got it? Right. So from E is equal to 2G 1 plus mu that is equal to 3K 1 minus 2 mu is equal to 9KG by 3K plus G. This is the equation, right? E is equal to 2g 1 plus mu 3k 1 minus 2 mu is equal to 9kg by 3k plus g right okay now see here we all know this equation <coughs> e means young modulus g means rigidity modulus mu means poisson's ratio k is bulk modulus i'll have it right what is the important point right first point remember this one right if you know any two con elastic constant right you can identify remaining okay right that is the first point so how it is possible right if you consider young modulus and rigidity modulus is given then you can identify the poisson's ratio once you identify the poisson's ratio you know the young modulus substitute here you can identify the bulk modulus likewise if you are bulk modulus and rigidity modulus is given right here bulk modulus and rigidity modulus is given you can identify the e young modulus once you know these two you can identify the poisson's ratio right likewise if you know any two elastic constants out of four if you know any two elastic constants you can easily find out remaining two okay that is the first key point right got it next one 
I told earlier, right? We are all speaking about this linearly elastic isotropic homogeneous material. Okay, so any con two constants required to find the remaining two. Okay, right? Now coming to the second point. Okay, it is about Poisson's ratio. So it is between minus one to zero point five. I can split it into uh, three types. Right? Less than zero. Right? Okay. That means less than 0 up to minus 1 right exactly 0 and greater than 0 up to 0.5 there are a three conditions okay right so what are those three conditions so we all know that the cast iron or your steel which is having around 0.3 point uh, uh, it is from uh, okay sorry this 0.25 to 0.35 right it will be around like this right your Poisson's ratio for a steel or a cast iron, right? Where for rubbers, you can find out the Poisson's ratio is 0.48 to 0.5. Okay, right? But where you can find out this zero value, where you can find out this zero Poisson's ratio, right? You can find it out in cork, right? So a cork which was inserted into a bottle, right? So which will be having a Poisson's ratio of zero, right? So what is the formula for Poisson's ratio? Lateral strain by linear strain okay right when you will get the zero value when you will get the zero value right where your numerator is zero right so if your lateral strain is zero your value will be zero now consider right take a cork and insert the cork inside a neck of a bottle right there will not be any kind of a lateral strain only you will have a linear strain okay right so 0 by anything is equal to 0. So for a cork which is inserted into a bottleneck which is for a which will have a Poisson's ratio of 0. Right. So coming to the uh, part here. Right. So Poisson's ratio less than 0. Right. Where I can I told you right Poisson's ratio is mentioned uh, up to minus 1. Right. Where you can get this Poisson's ratio. Right. It is taken for a foam right so we all used to play with the dusters right in the uh, school days we all used to play with the dusters right where it is a sponge type right so if you take the sponge right just imagine if you take the sponge and if you compress the sponge in longitudinal uh, direction the sponge will tends to compress in lateral direction also right so foams is a good example for Poisson's ratio less than zero right if you take a sponge and compress in the longitudinal direction it will also compress in the lateral direction okay right so if that is the case so lateral strain will be mentioned in negative right it will be mentioned in negative right your linear strain where your linear strain is positive that means it is the compressive lateral strain is also compressive so You'll, it will be mentioned in negative value right so the mu value is equal to right which is less than zero okay right this is a foam okay right so have you understand it right got it now so we will move to the next one right next uh, problem right so here is the uh, few problems based on the questions which we which i have uh, explained you earlier right so these are the previous uh, guess, gate questions right I told you right so I will solve those basic elastic constant questions by using the only one equation right please remember it I will solve it only one equation right before that we will see few problems on basic steady stresses and Hooke's law okay right right so two identical circular rods of same diameter same length which are subjected to a same magnitude of axial tensile force right one of the rod is made out of a mild steel one of rod is made out of a mild steel having modulus of elasticity 206 gigapascal other rod is made out of a cast iron having modulus of elasticity 100 gigapascal assume both materials to be homogeneous and isotropic both materials to be homogeneous and isotropic so the axial force causes same amount of uniform stress in both rods okay right okay good so the stresses developed are within the proportional limit that is the main point here right stresses developed are within the proportional limit which means 
it is under elastic region okay right so well, there are a following observations which was found out right you need to identify which is the correct observation got it right so both rods elongate by same amount or mild steel rod elongates more than cast iron rod cast iron rod elongates more than mild steel or as the stresses are equal strains are also equal in both ends okay right these are the four options so how to solve it right so just write out right i will uh, i will explain you in a detail right but uh, in your examination you don't want to uh, write all those things right if you remember all those things then it will it will be well and good right for an explanation i'm writing you uh, in detail right okay got it now from the first sentence two identical circular rods okay cross section is circular simple diameter is same length is same so i'll take d1 is equal to d2 and l1 is equal to l2 okay right this is subjected to a same magnitude of axial tensile force subjected to a same magnitude of axial tensile force okay right so your force p1 is equal to p2 right so one of the rod is made of mild steel modulus of elasticity 206 okay which is equal to 206 giga pascal okay other rod is made out of a cast iron having modulus of elasticity 100 right so assume both materials to be homogeneous assume both materials to be homogeneous and isotropic in axial axial force causes the same amount of uniform stress in both rods okay right so the stress is uniform so sigma s is equal to sigma c or it can be written as sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 okay right so the stress developed are within the proportional limit following observation is given right now you take it right so young smallest is equal to stress by strain okay right where stresses are equal so young smallest is inversely proportional to strain it can be written as l by del l okay l by del l so where length is also equal so e is directly proportional to change in length okay right e is directly proportional to change in length right now you see here you see here right uh, your young small is inversely proportional to change in length right if your change in length is increased your young small is decreased vice versa if your young small is increased your change in length will be decreased okay right so by comparing steel and cast iron steel has a higher young small less so it will have a lesser change in length okay right so your steel will have a lesser change in length comparing to cast iron so cast iron rod elongates more than the mild steel rod okay right cast iron rod elongates more than the mild steel rod so this is the correct answer remaining are the wrong one got it right so next question this is a one uh, interesting question you can see here right this is another interesting question okay so a rod of length l having a uh, uh, uniform cross section area of a which is subjected to a tensile force p okay right as shown in figure so if young smallest of material varies linearly from young smallest varies from e1 to e2 right along the length of the rod right the normal stress developed at this section <coughs> the normal stress developed at this section yes yes so you need to find the stress developed at the section yes yes right so very simple one you need to find the stress which is equal to formula is load by area where in this component the load is common right or standard and area which is a uniform cross section area area is uniform cross section area right uniform cross section area right so 
there is no change in applied load and cross section area okay right so if there is no change in load and area your stress will be same it will not be change okay right so stress is equal to load by area right there is no part of young smallest will be coming here right don't worry about it right whatever the length of the rod right whatever the length of the rod whatever the property changes the load applied will be common throughout the length and if area is uniform throughout the length the stress will also be same throughout the length so stress is equal to load by area this is your correct answer okay right next one a steel bar of 40 mm into 40 mm square cross section which is subjected to an axial compressive load of 200 kilo newton if the length of the bar is 2 meters and your young smallest is 200 gigapascal what is the elongation of the bar will be what is your elongation of the bar okay right so it can be it can be written as Young smallest is equal to stress by strain. Stress is equal to load by area. Strain is equal to change in length by original length. So that is equal to load by area, change in length, original length. Just rearrange it. Change in length is equal to PL by AE. PL by AE. Okay, right? So load is equal, load applied is equal to, right? 200 kilo newton converted into newtons into length of the bar is 2 into 10 power 3 divided by a which is cross section is square cross section 40 into 40 into young small is 200 giga pascal means you should convert it into mega pascals because 1 mega pascal is equal to 1 newton per mm square right got it now substitute the values okay <coughs> sorry <coughs> right 10 power 3 10 power 3 this is 100 100 right 20 got it so 1 2 okay i'll be a 1 so 10 by 6 okay right photos are 8 photos are 8 right 10 by 8 that is equal to 1.25 mm 1.25 mm right this is your answer right okay coming to the next question a 300 mm long copper wire of uniform cross section is pulled in a tension so that the maximum tensile stress is 270 mega pascal is developed within the wire the entire deformation of a wire remains linearly elastic so entire deformation of wire is remains linearly elastic so the elastic modulus of copper is 100 giga pascal your elastic modulus of copper is 100 giga pascal so what is the resultant elongation Okay, very simple same equation change in length by change in length PL by AE where instead of P by A instead of this uh, load by area directly the stress is given okay right so your change in length is equal to stress L by E okay stress is 270 into your length is 300 and Young's modulus E is equal to 100 gigapascal into 3 okay right 100 100 okay so right 3 into 0 0.27 okay 3 into 0 0.27 so if you uh, calculate it right 8.81 mm so this is your answer got it yes yeah so coming to the next one next problem a bar of varying square cross section is loaded symmetrically as shown in figure. So load shown are placed on one of the axis of symmetry of cross section. Ignoring self weight, 
the maximum tensile stress ignoring the self weight what is the maximum tensile stress in newton per mm square anywhere okay that is your uh, point right so here coming to the point here right uh, there are a two parts one and two right so you need to find the stress sigma one load by area sigma two load by area right okay got it now you can see here right yeah sigma one load is equal to total load on first component is 100 kilo newton another 100 another 50 will be totally applied so 100 into 100 sorry 100 plus 100 plus 50 into 10 power 3 to convert into newtons your area is pi by 4 diameter is 100 mm square again for the second component total load on the second component is only the 50 kN load will be applied to the second component so 50 into 10 power 3 divided by 50 square pi by 4 50 square got it <coughs> got it right yeah so if you calculate it you will get the answer that is 25 that is the maximum uh, tensile stress which is created right so now coming to the next part right this part which is uh, this parts which is uh, from the elastic constants okay right so number of independent elastic constants required to define the stress strain relationship right what are the number of uh, elastic constants which is here to define your uh, elastic constants right so we have already discussed it right so in this slide itself i told you right you need just two elastic constants to de determine the remaining one right we have already discussed about it so the answer for the question is two that is the answer here okay right okay got it so right so next one second question right a rod of a length a rod of a length L and diameter D is subjected to a tensile load P. Which of the following is sufficient to calculate the resulting change in diameter? Okay, right. So the options are Young's modulus, shear modulus, Poisson's ratio and both Young's modulus and shear modulus. That is the uh, question here, right? <coughs> right. So in order to find this, in order to find this, right? <coughs> You need to find the change in diameter. Change in diameter. This is what you need to find it out. So how you will get it right? How you can find out this change in diameter? Okay. Lateral strain is equal to change in diameter by original diameter. So now you must know diameter and lateral strain where diameter is given in the question. How to find this lateral strain? So mu is equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain. So now you need to know mu and longitudinal strain. That means Poisson's ratio and longitudinal strain. Got it? Right? So how to find longitudinal uh, your mu? That means if you know Young's modulus and shear modulus, you can identify the Poisson's ratio. And again, if you know Young's modulus and <coughs> you know uh, you know the value of uh, length, right? Young's modulus, load and area right all those things are known then you can find the longitudinal strain got it right so if, if you know young's modulus load diameter and length you can find the longitudinal stress if you know young's modulus and shear modulus you can find the poisson's ratio once these two are known value then you can find lateral strain once lateral strain is known you can identify the change in diameter got it right so the correct answer for the question is d okay right okay right Now, coming to the third question, right? If a poison ratio of an elastic material is 0 0.4, the ratio of modulus of rigidity to Young's modulus is, okay? If the poison ratio of elastic material is 0 0.4, what is the ratio of modulus of rigidity to Young's modulus? That means, G by E, 
okay so we know the equation e is equal to 2g 1 plus mu right so g by e is equal to 1 by 1 sorry 2 1 plus mu that is equal to <coughs> 1 divided by 2 into 1 plus 0 0.4 that is equal to right 1 by 2.8 so if you do it right math you will have this value 0 0.357 Alright, right? I told you, right? I can solve it. We, we can solve these problems within 30 seconds, right? That is why I'm uh, teaching you, right? Please note it down, right? We can solve this elastic constant problem in 30 seconds, right? Got it? Now, uh, yeah, this is the question which is uh, given for our uh, uh, learners in the An Academy app, right? So, uh, right? Here, the answer for this uh, question is A. That means E is equal to 2g1 plus mu right the question is right in terms of Poisson's ratio ratio of Young's modulus to shear modulus so e by g Young's modulus to shear modulus is equal to 2 1 plus mu so the answer is a right got it <coughs> coming to the fifth question okay uh, thank you Siddiq thank you Satyamurthy right so uh, relationship between Young's modulus bulk modulus and Poisson's ratio. What is the relation between Young's modulus, bulk modulus and Poisson's ratio? That is, right, E is equal to 3K 1 minus 2 mu. Very basic one, basic equation. I told you, right, if you know that equation, you can solve it. You can see this, these questions are cast in 2002, 2004, 14, 8, 14, right? Okay, these are the recent questions. Okay, here, this question which is asked twice, that means 7 and 14, you can see here. So, for an isotropic material, okay, relationship between Young's modulus uh, E and shear modulus G, Poisson's ratio mu. Very simple, right? So, it is just a remodified, right? We have already uh, written uh, three, four times here. 2G, 1 plus mu. Just reoriented. G is equal to, G is equal to E by 2, 1 plus mu. Okay, right? So, this is the correct answer for the question. Got it, right? Next, <clears throat> seventh question, a rod is subjected to a uniaxial load within linear elastic limit when the change in stress is 200 megapascal, strain is 0.001, Poisson's ratio is 0.3. The modulus of rigidity in gigapascal, same equation. So, G is equal to E by 2, 1 plus mu. Okay, right. So, if you know stress by strain is equal to Young's modulus where stress is given as 200 megapascal strain is 0.001 right if you do it then 200 into 10 power 3 megapascals this is your stress this is your Young's modulus okay right 2 into 10 power 5 divided by your mu value which is given as 0.3 okay solve it you will get the answer 77 gigapascal yes right so you see I am solving it within 30 seconds all those questions are gate questions yes so engineering questions, we will see engineering questions, right? Okay. The linearly elastic isotropic homogeneous material, number of elastic constants required to relate stress strain. Stress relation between stress strain is means Young's modulus, right? So what is the Young's modulus? Uh, how to find Young's modulus? If you know G and mu, right, you can find Young's modulus. Or else if you know K and G, you, you can find the Young's modulus. Or else if you know K and mu, you can find the Young's modulus. So, any two is required to find the stress strain relationship. That means E, Young's modulus. Got it? Right. Coming to the second question, which is also similar to the first question, right? Both are uh, very uh, similar questions, right? So, E, <coughs> E, G, K, and mu represents the elastic modulus, shear modulus, bulk modulus, and Poisson's ratio, respectively. Linearly elastic isotropic and homogeneous material. Okay, it is a linearly elastic isotropic and homogeneous material. Please understand this point. To express the stress strain relationship, that means E, to express the stress strain relationship for this material, at least, right, any two of four must be known. Okay, right, that means any two of four constants must be known. Okay, that is what I'm try, uh, I'm uh, trying to say in regularly. Okay, got it. Right. Coming to the third one. Okay, here. Okay. 
third question an isotropic elastic material is characterized by how it is characterized okay so two independent models of elasticity along two mutually perpendicular directions or two independent models of elasticity along two mutually perpendicular directions and Poisson's ratio or models of elasticity models of rigidity and Poisson's ratio or any two out of models of elasticity models of rigidity and Poisson's ratio okay again same question which is asked in the different manner okay this is asked in 2016 engineering service question for it right so see here any two of models of elasticity or rigidity or a poison ratio that is the correct quest correct answer here yeah right next one right <clears throat> for an anisotropic material completely anisotropic material right the hooke's law based right which allows the hooke's law right so totally there are a 24 21 elastic constants you will be having a 21 elastic constants for an anisotropic material <clears throat> yeah got it and for an orthotropic material yeah here is, a, is given for an orthotropic material you will be having a nine elastic constants okay right so when a material which is show direction dependent property right that means if you measure a mechanical property the mechanical property varies based on the direction then it is called as an anisotropic material okay right next one <clears throat> Mecha measured mechanical properties of a material are same in particular directions if, if your mechanical property is same in a particular direction of each point this property of material is known as homogeneity this is known as a homogeneity means homogeneous material homogeneity okay right okay. so an orthotropic material under a plane stress condition okay will have a nine independent elastic constants got it <coughs> right so this is also another uh, uh, calling option which is given for in the an academy app right so uh, how to match this question right usually i will ask my learners right my students right start from the easiest one okay then you can easily answer these kind of questions right if you uh, start from the easiest one you can answer it very easily right so what's easier one here models of rigidity right models of uh, rigidity which is given as pascals okay pascals means newton per meter square or newton per mm square right coming to the next one stiffness stiffness means newton per meter right load by deflection newton per meter and next one is dynamic viscosity which is newton second per meter square and fourth third or second one is kinematic viscosity meter square per second okay right next young smallest of elasticity or a poisson's ratio of a material what is the young smallest of elasticity and Poisson's ratio of a material are 1.25 10 to 10 power 5 mega Pascal and 0.34 respectively. This is your Young's modulus and elast uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So modulus of elasticity of material. What is the modulus of elasticity of material? Right. So that is equal to more sorry modulus of rigidity of a material. Okay. Right. Same equation. G is equal to E by what 2 1 plus mu. Okay, right substitute the values you will get the answer 0. 0.4664 into 10 power 5 megapascals that is your answer okay. so next tenth question there are a statements which is given here so modulus of rigidity and bulk modulus of material are found to be 60 gigapascal and 140 uh, gigapascal 140 uh, gigapascal respectively what is the uh, statements elastic modulus is 20 to sorry 200 giga pascal poisson's ratio is 0 0.3 elastic modulus is 158 giga pascal poisson's ratio is 0 0.2 which is the correct statement okay right so the correct statement is uh, 1 and 3 1 and 3 or 2 and 4 or 1 and 4 or 2 and 3 so here you see 1 and 3 1 and 3 both will not be the correct option 
because this is not at all possible. Here both things are speaking about elastic modulus. 2 and 4. This is also not at all possible because both the values 2 and 4 both are speaking about Poisson's ratio. The possibility is 1 and 4 or 2 and 3. Here correct answer is 2 and 3 because right how to find this value we all know this equation e is equal to 2g 1 plus mu that is equal to 3k 1 minus 2 mu that is equal to 9kg by 3k plus g okay right so here if you know modulus of rigidity and bulk modulus modulus of rigidity and bulk modulus substitute the here you can find out the Young's modulus once you find the Young's modulus and you know already the modulus of rigidity, you can find the Poisson's ratio, right? Now, by substituting these values, you can find out the both things and substitute it, you will get the answer. That means 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 3. This is the correct answer. Okay? Got it? Right? Now, next one. The modulus of rigidity of a modulus of rigidity and bulk modulus of a material are found to be 70 gigapascal and 150 gigapascal, right? What is the answer? Same thing, right? Same equation, same concept, right? Substitute it, you can find out the answer here, right? Got it? Next question, okay? For a material following a Hooke's law, the values of elastic and shear modulus are. 3 into 10 power 5 megapascal and 1 into 1.2 to 10 power 5 megapascal value of bulk modulus right so you know elastic and shear modulus same equation e is equal to 9 kg by 3 k plus g so you know young's modulus and shear modulus you can find the k value yes right you got it so just please you can uh, cross one play right 9 kg is equal to 3 e k plus e g okay right so if you uh, note right here 3 e k 9 kg 3 k is equal to e g okay so if you take k as the common value k is equal to sorry k is equal to E G divided by nine G minus three K. Okay, right. So this is your equation. Sorry, three E. This is three E. Three E. Okay, right. Three E. Right. Got it. Yeah. So this is how you can solve it and uh, substitute the values of Young's modulus and rigidity modulus. You will get the answer. Right. Finally, you will get the answer. The answer is 2 to 10 to the power 5 megapascals. Right. Next one. Uh, in homogeneous isotropic elastic material, modulus of elasticity E in terms of G. Modulus of elasticity E in terms of G and K. Same thing, same equation which we have already written here. Right. So, the equation 9 kg by G plus 3 K. Okay. Right. So, here. Another one, right? This is a uh, question which is uh, asked in the our uh, unacademy app, right? So relationship between linear elastic properties E, rigidity modulus G, and bulk modulus, right? That is the uh, question here, right? So the answer for this uh, question is D, right? So how to find out? E is equal to 9 kg by 3 k plus G, okay, right? So just uh, have, uh, I need to write it out once again, right? 9 by E is equal to 3K plus G by KG, right? 9 by E is equal to 3K by KG plus G by KG, okay, right? So 9 by E is equal to 3 by G plus 1 by K. Okay, right have you got it right yes so you can solve these problems within 30 seconds right i told you got it right. so next one right so this is also uh, we already solved it right G, d is the correct answer here right e is equal to 9 kg by 3 k plus g okay right this is our relationship got it right next one
right so uh, thank you everyone to watch this uh, session right so if you need to subscribe for an academy app right you can use this uh, referral code suresh hyphen five seven eight nine right so if you use this referral code you can get a offer up to 30 percentage right so thank you for watching